we will continue with the order of operations with rational numbers. Um, but the first one here, um, we need to do division first because our order of operations is bed mass, brackets first, exponents second, division and multiplication, and then addition and subtraction. Um, let's put that right there. Um, so here we have to do this first right here. Now, when it's division, you change it to multiplication. You uh, flip the five over four to four over five, or you flip the divisor. But now let's hold on for a second here. We have five over four divided by five over four. When you divide anything by itself, it gives you one. So you, you could save yourself that hassle and just go five over two minus this divided by itself is one. Now this is one over one, so we have to do common denominator. And the common denominator is two. Two divided by two is one times five is five minus two divided by one is two. Two times one is two. And therefore we get three over two as an answer for this one. Now let's go to this. We have to do this first because multiplication, multiplications or multiplication comes before addition. So we just rewrite the negative six over five uh, and then plus what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna reduce. So five goes into itself once, goes into 10 twice. And this two and two, they reduce, they give me one, one. Now you remember I said, when you multiply in two things, if you have an even number of negatives, then the answer is positive. So this is gonna be positive. And um, so the top is going to be three and one times one, just one. So now we have negative six over five plus three. And I'm just going to put this over one and then do a common denominator, which is five. Five divided by five is one. One, one times negative six is negative six plus five divided by one is five times three is 15. Negative six plus 15 is nine. So the answer is nine over five. Again, for any of you who missed the last lesson here, we have two things, two, two rational numbers that are multiplied. Just look at how many negatives you have. And if you have an even number of negatives, the answer should be positive. And if you have an odd number of negatives, then the answer should be negative. Here it's even because we have two negatives. So therefore the answer is positive three. Um, the next one, is um, just gonna close this bracket right there. So what we do, we do what's in the brackets first. Um, so here we have, we, I don't, we don't like the negative to be on the bottom, so I'm just gonna put it on top. And for some of you who, uh, or I'm gonna show everyone that negative three over four is the same as three over negative four is the same as negative three over four like this. All of these things are the same. Um, we don't like this format. Um, you definitely, especially when you're adding fractions and stuff, you don't wanna put the negative on the bottom here. It's this or this format that you wanna work with. Um, so here we have, neg so therefore negative three over four, and when you're subtracting and adding, you look at the two signs right here, if they are the same, the sign becomes positive. So that becomes plus three over four divided by two. Now negative three over four plus three over four is gonna give you zero. Zero divided by two, which is zero. So that's the answer for that one. Um, This here, we gotta you know, do the brackets first. So we have negative six in the brackets. We have to do common denominator and the common denominator here is 10. 10 divided by five is two, two times four is eight. And then you have the minus and 10 divided by two is five, five times one is five, which gives me negative six times eight minus five is three, three over 10. 
Remember, if we're multiplying a whole number or an integer by a fraction, let's try to see if you could reduce the integer right here with the bottom of the fraction. Uh, you don't have to put it over one and all of that stuff. If, you, if, if that helps you, go for it. But just know if you're multiplying a whole number or an integer by a fraction, see if, the, if this could reduce the, this, this here and the denominator of the fraction. So yes, uh, two goes into six three times, two goes into 10 five times, and then we cannot reduce anymore. Now you just multiply that, and the answer is gonna be negative, multiply the three into the three, you get nine, and you don't multiply the five by anything. Um, here, we have multiplication, and we have an even number of negatives, so the answer of all of this is gonna be positive. Um, and then we start, we're gonna start reducing. So right away, I see this three here reduces with this three and it, both of us give us one, three goes into itself once. Also this two right here goes into itself once and goes into six, three times. Now nothing else could reduce. So therefore one times one times three is just three. And five times one times one is five. Again, we said that we have, when you multiply and if you have an even number of negatives in, in, in all three here, as you see, we have an even number because we have two negatives. So that's an even number of negatives. The answer is positive. Uh, and so it's three over five plus, we still have the one over five there, which gives me, we already have a common denominator. So just four over five. Well, uh, what I'm gonna do next, I'm just gonna take a few more that are maybe uh, a little bit more complicated. Um, so just give me one second here. Number one, three quarters times one over negative two plus five over six times negative one over three. So order of operations, multiplication first. So I'm gonna do this first. And also I'm gonna do this. So what I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get here, you cannot reduce. So the two negative, three negative two, the four and one, you cannot really reduce and three over quarters. So the answer is gonna be positive times, because we have one negative here, it's an odd number of negatives, so the answer is gonna be negative, or positive times negative, just negative, but write the negative on top, don't write it on the bottom. Um, so three of, negative three over eight, plus, here also we cannot reduce, so um, we're gonna get negative five over 18, um, which gives me, negative three over eight, positive and negative, opposite signs, you get a minus, so just minus five over 18. The next thing is we gotta find a common denominator here. The common denominator is 72. 72 divided by eight is nine. Nine times negative three is negative 27. Um, and 20, 72 divided by 18, of course we have a minus here, 72 divided by 18 is four, four times five is 20. And therefore this would equal negative 27 minus 20 is negative 47 over 72 and that's your final answer. I'm just gonna move this to the side here. So negative 27 minus 20 over 72. I need the room for the next question. So here it's multiplication again. So um, we have to do the multiplication first. So we have to do for this and then this, and then this, right here. So here, the three will cancel the three, so you get once. Here, the two goes into itself once, it goes into eight, four times, so one times one is one, four times one is four, so that's one quarter. Minus here, we cannot really reduce, so it's just gonna be minus five over 12, because one times negative five is negative five, and six times two is 12. Plus here we cannot reduce either. So we're gonna get negative nine over 20. Again, 
whenever you have a negative on the bottom, just take it to the top. It doesn't help you leaving it on the bottom, especially when you start doing common uh, lowest, lowest common denominator and all that stuff. So here we need, we need to rewrite this as one quarter. Negative and negative is plus five over 12. And positive and negative opposite signs give me minus nine over 20, which gives me the common denominator here is gonna be 60. 60 divided by four is, is uh, 15, 15 times one is 15 plus 60 divided by 12 is five, five times five is 25. And then 60 divided by 20, we still have the minus there. 60 divided by 20 is three, three times nine is 27. Again, this is the way I do common denominator, do it whichever way you're comfortable with. Um, so that is 50 plus 25 is 40, 40 minus 29 is 11. So the answer is 11 over. 60. Um, next one here. Um, so this next one here, it's um, you have division here, you have to do this first, and then you do this second. So if I look at this, I have to rewrite this as five over two times, change division to multiplication, you flip, and it's gonna be five over negative four. Minus, I'm gonna reduce here. So four goes into itself once, it goes into eight twice. Three goes into itself once, it goes into nine three times. That's negative and negative, when you multiply them, they become positive. So. Uh, so basically you have minus two over three. And here we cannot really reduce. So what I have, I have negative 25 over eight. Again, just bring that negative to the top because it's the same thing. Don't write that on the bottom. Minus two thirds. A common denominator here, which is 24. 24 divided by eight is three, three times negative 25 is negative 75. Minus 24 divided by three is eight, eight times two is 16. And that's gonna give me negative 91 over 24. Sorry, I just noticed that a mistake that I made here. 60 divided by 20 is three, three times nine is 27, not, not 29. So um, I'm gonna fix this. Um, so it is 27, oops. And that will make this answer. So it's gonna be 13 over 60. That's the answer for that one. Um, we're done with this chapter. Um, so, the next time, you know, um, as I always say, math is like a puzzle and puzzles are fun to solve. So just always think it's a puzzle you're trying to solve it and puzzles, you know, they take it to reign of thinking. Um, in math, you really have to write things down, you know, don't try to do things in your head because if you do things in your head, you'll make a mistake. It doesn't matter how good you are always doing things in your head, you make a mistake. So write things down, always write things down. And math is sequential steps, you know, one step leads you to another, you know, and as you go simplify, you know, don't, if you multiply fractions without reducing, you're gonna get big numbers and then, the, you know, your, your question is just gonna get complicated. You might get the right answer, you know, with the help of a calculator and stuff. But uh, if you reduce your numbers, you know, simplifying your numbers get smaller and smaller and then it's easier to work with. All right, so till next time, take care, bye-bye.